Abacodes. UML class diagram illustrates the structure of the system by describing classes, their attributes, methods, and relationships between them. Just before we begin discussing the diagram, let's remind ourselves what is a class. In a nutshell, class is a template for creating objects, as well as representing objects' initial state, attributes, and behavior, methods. Each attribute has its own type, each method has its own signature, but in the class diagram only the class name is mandatory. And it makes sense, because even the best psychics will not be able to guess what this nameless square is supposed to mean, or what it generally refers to. So let's take a look at the building blocks of a class diagram, starting with the class itself. The name of the class is written in the uppermost partition, followed by the class attributes with their types written after the colon. And finally, the last partition contains methods. The type that the method can return is written after the colon in the method signature. You've probably noticed the minuses and pluses before the class attributes and methods. These are the access modifiers or class visibility notation. Plus means public, minus private, hash protected, and tilde means package local. Each parameter in a method can also be described in terms of its direction with the respect to the caller, in, out, in, out. For example, method 1 uses p1 as an input parameter and the value of p1 is somehow used by the method and the method does not change p1. Method 2 accepts p2 as an input-output parameter. The p2 value is somehow used by the method and it accepts the output value of the method and the method itself can change p2. Method 3 uses p3 as the output parameter. In other words, the parameter serves as a repository for the output value of the method. We can use class diagrams at different stages of the software development lifecycle. Therefore, we might want them to reflect a different levels of specification. And thankfully, there are three different perspectives or levels of specification that we can use. A conceptual perspective is when class diagrams are interpreted as describing entities of the real world. Thus, if we choose conceptual perspective, we construct a diagram that represents the concepts in the domain. These concepts relate to classes that implement them. The conceptual perspective is considered language independent. A specification perspective is when diagrams are interpreted as describing abstractions of software or components with specification and interfaces, but without any reference to a specific implementation. Thus, if you look at the specification perspective, you can generally see some software interfaces, but not necessarily their implementation. And finally, the implementation perspective is when diagrams are interpreted as a description of software implementations in a particular technology or programming language. Thus, if you choose to use this perspective, you can choose to depict the actual software implementation. Now, let's have a look at the relationships between classes. I will describe the six main types of notation that are most common. These are association, inheritance, implementation, dependency, aggregation, and composition. Similar to relationships connecting objects, associations connect classes. In order for there to be a connection between classes, there must be an association between them. If we assume that we have two classes that interact with each other, a continuous connecting line should be drawn between them, indicating the association in the diagram. Often we can also see a verb written above the line that conveys its meaning. In addition, we can also specify the multiplicity, that is, the number of objects that can take part in the relationship. Multiplicity is specified as a comma-separated list of intervals, where each interval is represented as a minimum maximum. For example, one student can learn from many tutors, and a tutor can teach many students. Inheritance. Sometimes it is also called generalization. As the name implies, this is a schematic representation of the relationship between the parent class and its descendants. The hollow arrow is always directed towards the parent class. A classic example of inheritance depicts a square class, a rectangle class, 
and a circle class as descendants of their common parent class. We can connect each class with their parent class separately or combine those lines and draw one common arrow line that connects all common descendants with their parent. If descendants inherit from an abstract class, then the name of such parent class is written in italics. Realization. Usually this refers to the relationships between an interface and objects that implement this interface. For example, the owner interface has methods for buying and selling private property and the relationships between the owner interface and the person and corporation classes that implement this interface are depicted by a dashed line with an arrowhead pointing at the interface. Dependency. When an object of one class uses an object of another class in its method and this object is not stored in any field, then this kind of relationship is modeled as a dependency. Dependency is essentially a special case of the association of two classes. In this case, changes in one class will inexorably entail changes in the other. For example, this person class has a has read method with a book as an input parameter, which returns true if, for example, the person has read the book. Dependency is drawn with a dashed line with arrowhead pointing towards the class on which the method of another class could depend. Aggregation a special type of relationship between classes when one class is a composite part of another. For example, a programmer's workstation could consist of a chair, a desk, a computer and a fan. But when we delete the workstation class, we still have all these classes, but on their own. They no longer form an aggregate class workstation. Aggregation is shown as a continuous line with an unfilled diamond, connected to the class which represents the aggregate. Composition is a type of aggregation, but this time classes that form the aggregator class are destroyed when the aggregator class is destroyed. For example, our body is made up of organs, but they can't function by themselves. Composition is depicted similarly to aggregation, but this time the diamond is solid. And as a conclusion to this topic, I just want to remind you that UML is not so much about a pretty picture. UML is actually a powerful tool in the programmer's toolkit. If you can understand and utilize it properly, say, get in the habit of drawing your class diagram before you sit down and actually code your next e-commerce gaming financial and whatnot project, time invested in drawing a succinct and clear UML diagram will eventually pay off and can save your project from design flaws and other errors you might encounter without a proper plan in front of you. Don't forget to give this video Emperor's thumbs up, subscribe to this channel and toll the bell to make sure you won't miss anything exciting. That was V, thank you and goodbye.